the first production at the Actors Theatre of Louisville, we were very lucky in that we got a wonderful character actor, William Duff Griffin, who up until that time, uh, Duffy had done, uh, um, he was a very big guy, you know, like, like going with a deep, deep voice. And he'd done extreme character actors. Well, here he was playing Hamlet. And after he got used to that, he just took over that play and presided over the whole thing like a garden party. And he captured perfectly the uh, defiance that, that Goring had at the same time trying to save, save himself. Then you get into the British, uh, and our, our prosecutor um, was uh, very deficient. He made beautiful speeches, but when he cross-examined Goring, Goring got the better of him. He was uh, Robert Jackson. He was in associate justice in the United States, and he was no match for Goring at all. Goring made a bit of a fool out of him. And um, so the British prosecutor named Shawcross saved the day, and they got Goring on some things that, that he could not uh, deny. And he uh, um, uh, finally, of course, was to be hanged along with everybody else. But when they got to him, he, he, somebody got that pill to him. And just before they were all going to be hanged without anybody knowing when it was, he knew when it was. So he cheated the hangman. Uh, <laughs> they panicked and they thought, let's hang the body, let's do this, that, and the other. But finally, they, they, they let it happen. And in the play, after he's dead, he has a little speech at the end of the play. In which basically he says, I was a good number two. And that's the title because he was, in Hitler's will, he was until the end of the war when Hitler changed it, but he was the number two man in Germany. And uh, he said, uh, there will always be a number two, and I will always, uh, I'll come back, and I'll, and I'll be called again, I'll be needed again, and I'll come back, and so on. And the last thing that he says is, after all, um, what do you think men are? And I think the life of Goering has, you know, because he was both. He was, he was a devoted husband, by the way. Loved his first wife, who died. Married a second time very happily. Had a daughter he adored. And I have a scene where the daughter says goodbye to him, and I try to play it as any father and any daughter. Um, and um, so there were, you know, some good things about this man. Contradictions again. Again, again, what else is life? What else is life but contradictions? And it's the one thing that makes real truth in, in theater, and it's the one thing that people can't stand in films and in television and so on. But it's what makes the heart of, of movies, is ambivalence and contradictions, the fact that, that people who are goring, who had many, many fine things about him, was this maybe, maybe the third most destructive man of the 20th century, after Stalin and Hitler. Because without Goring, there were, I don't think there would ever have been, been any Third Reich. He was the, the conduit to Hindenburg. He did all sorts of things like that. Uh, so uh, we, we did the play, and uh, the first run through, um, I went down, you know. And there's a great saying in the theater that what you have on the first um, run through is about what you're going to have on opening night, no matter what you think you're going to. And sure enough, the play was limping along, and I saw that I had all these speeches about the past, wonderful speeches about things that had happened with blah, blah, blah. I, I said, okay, okay. And I went back and cut 10 pages of great speeches about the past, and the play sat up, and it worked fine. And it went very well. The opening, uh, the opening at, at, at Louisville, two-thirds of the audience were on their feet applauding wildly, and one-third sitting in stony fury. They did not like this at all. And you can see why. You can see why. And it wasn't, just, it wasn't just Jews. It was a lot of people that did not like this at all. Um, the play uh, then went on to a lot of uh, productions around the country, but there were no major productions. Sir Peter Hall optioned the play. He tried to get every famous British actor he could, starting with Albert Finney and going down. None of them would do the play. Um, they didn't want to be this, this monster, you know. 